Hey everybody, it's Jennifer J. How are you today? Thank you for joining me again for a new episode. Um, I have my timer set and we're ready to go. I hope you have your Bible with you today. We are going to use it just for a minute. Um, it's a familiar passage, so you may have it memorized. Uh, but if you're not real familiar with your Bible, and not everybody is, is as familiar as the next person, so you might want to read from it. Um, so I'll give you just a minute. If you want to hit pause, run and grab it, come back and join us. Uh, but it's going to be out of Psalms, and so that's going to be right in the middle of your Bible. Now, I say that, and then I do it, and I almost hit Proverbs every time. Well, I hit Isaiah, so I was close. <laughs> it's really close to the middle, but you should be able to find it right in the middle. So if you hit, hopefully you hit the middle. I think it's because I have a uh, concordance and stuff in the back of my Bible, so it's not exactly half, but if you don't have all that at the back, then you might be more in the middle. Otherwise, it's just a little to the left. Um, but in Psalm, the 23rd Psalm, so like I said, a lot of you are already going to know this one, but we're going to read it together because I found this sermon online and it was um, through a little church um, in Arkansas. It's called How to Handle Your Valleys. And I just thought it was really good. This will probably be short and sweet. Uh, but I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read from the Holman Christian Standard. Actually, I'm lying to you. This is the New King James. So I'll read from the New King James. The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for You are with me. Your rod and Your staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I've noticed I was watching, um, this is totally unrelated, I apologize. I jumped right into a thought. As I was reading, I was doing this with my hand, and I was re-watching one of my episodes earlier because somebody made a comment on it, and I wasn't sure what they were referring to, so I went back to watch it. And I was doing this as I was reading. I didn't realize I had a little tick there, but apparently I do that when I read. So <laughs> now you guys are always going to notice when I do that. But I probably will too, so that's funny. Anyway, that is the 23rd Psalm. And because I don't like to lay the Bible on the floor, I'm going to reach over and put it on the bed. Um, but this sermon was really good, you guys. Uh, he talked about, okay, first of all, I wrote down the first several verses because I like to go through and like circle words that repeat and stuff like that because it kind of, if you ever watch Kay Arthur, she does that with precept upon precept teaching, with kind of learning how to spot the themes in the scripture. And so anyway, I had circled the word is, the Lord is my shepherd. I actually underlined it and circled it. And then I put a square around my, my shepherd. Um... So he said in this, God is in control. So we don't ever have to doubt that. And he's going to prove it by what David writes in the psalm. Uh, so the sheep need a shepherd. And we all know that, right? Sheep are dumb animals. So it's awesome that God compares us to sheep a lot in the Bible. <laughs> but sheep are dumb. They would eat the grass all the way down to the root. And that, so that no new grass could spring up, they would starve themselves because they would eat everything. And so the shepherd, his job is to keep them moving so that they graze, but don't kill the plant so that it'll grow up and feed them tomorrow, right? So, so he keeps them moving and shuffling along so that they're not killing the grass. Um, and they, they need a shepherd because they would just mess things up if they did it their way, they'd go their own way, they would leave the fold. They wouldn't stay together where there's safety. Um, you know, they'd get out by theirself where a lion or a predator could, could attack them, which is the same for us, right? We need to stay together. Um, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together in the Lord. I don't know where that's found in the Bible, but I know it's there and I can look it up if you need me to. Um, but we are supposed to stay together. And there's a reason for that, because when we get out here on an island, what can, what can happen is Satan attacks. He can 
whisper those little thoughts in your mind and get you thinking all kinds of wrong things or doing all kinds of wrong things um, because you're not in the fold being fed and being encouraged and being, um, uh, I can't think of the word that I want, but when people correct you when you've done something wrong and they give you reproof, I think that's the word I was looking for. Uh, so we need a shepherd, but the sheep need a shepherd. And he has a, uh, David has a personal relationship with God because he says, the Lord is my shepherd. So David is a shepherd. Um, for those of you that might not know your Bible as well, David, he did grow up to be a king and a mighty warrior. However, before that, and a man after God's own heart, but before all that, he was a shepherd and he tended to sheep. And so he recognized the similarities between himself and the sheep. And he said, the Lord is my shepherd. And he had a personal relationship with God. And we may be in a valley, but we're not alone. Uh, what he said is, he leads me, uh, where am I at? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. So he admits right there, like, I might be in the valley, but you're with me. And the valley of death was actually, it's actually a real place. Um, and I won't go down that road today, um, but it is an actual real place. And we can talk about that another time. If you would like, put it in the comments. Let me know that you're interested in that. But they called it the, the valley of the shadow of death. And it was a scary place, hence the name. <laughs> but uh, he said, you know, you'll see me through that. So God provides and protects and prospers you. And he also mentioned, and I thought this was cool to think about, because when we're in a valley, we think of it as a low place, right? We're in this low spot, and we don't really know how we're going to get out. But when you step back from the valley and look at the whole picture, a valley is between two mountains. So you might have just come off a mountaintop experience and you might be in a valley, but what's on the other side of the valley is another mountain. And I, I liked that, that word picture just to think about that, you know, I've shared with you that I'm kind of in a valley here in Arizona, literally, but also <laughs> figuratively because I am kind of in a low place where God isn't talking as frequently um, as clearly, as loudly, as pounding into me as he was um, the first five, six months of this journey, but I know that he's still working, and I'm, I'm now, the, the part is on me now to step out on faith, right, and do what he's told me to do, and so I just have to trust that he is still with me. He has not left me, and I know that he is, and I know that he won't leave, but I thought that was a very cool word picture to think about if you step back from your valley and, and think about what's on each side is the mountain. So you came off a mountain, you're in a valley, but there's another mountain ahead. So you're going to be okay. You're going to get out of here. Um, so the valley is not the final destination, he said. And I thought, I thought that's right. The valley is not the final destination. we got further to go. So he said the reality is that you have to accept the fact that you're in the valley. So I think what a lot of people do is... They, they don't accept that they're in a valley. They think of ways they can get out on their own or try to take things into their own hands, um, come up with their own solutions, instead of spending the time in the valley that's necessary because God has you in a valley for a reason. So I know in one of our episodes we talked about, you know, that things grow under the soil when you can't see that it's growing yet you can't see it above the soil you don't know what's happening under there but it's but it's happening and I think that's the same way in the valley we might not see what's happening behind the scenes but things are happening and we need to stay in the word and stay in prayer and stay in worship and wait and just wait on God and just be still and know that he is God so um, it does say that the valley draws you closer to the Lord. And I think that's so true because when we're up on the mountaintop, when everything's going fine, we tend to not study the Bible as much and not be in prayer as much and not spend as much time with God, right? Things are going fine. I got it, God. I got it from here. Until what? Until we slide back down into that valley. And then it's, oh, God, help me. <laughs> so what we have to remember is to stay close to God all the way up the mountain and, and when we get to the top. Remember him all the time and stay just as close to him at the high points as you do at the low points. 
Um, but in the valley, don't be afraid because God is there. And realize that you're walking through the valley. So it says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's not a place that you're stuck. Like I said, it's not your final destination. So you're just going, you're passing through. Now you might not be able to see how big or long the valley is or how long it might take you to get out of it. But I think it's helpful to remember that you're just passing through it. It's, it's not where you're going to stay. It's not where God's going to leave you. You're just passing through it. And there's nothing that surprises God. So acknowledge your resources. Um, it says, thy rod and thy, st thy staff, they comfort me. And so keep moving in the right direction and look for what resources you have that can help move you towards your final destination or towards the next thing. Um, and, and keep your eyes and your ears open and be attuned to God so that you're aware um, what direction to move. And the good shepherd, just like the shepherd of the sheep will grab, they have their staff, the rod and the staff that is a curved, you know, you've seen the shepherd boys with their staff. And so I do this like you know what that is, but that's the staff and they hold it, right? And they hold it to the ground. Um, but that hook is so they can grab that sheep, right? If it starts to wander off, they can grab it back and keep it in the fold. And God is going to snatch us up and put us back into the fold. He's not going to let us get too far away from him. He's not going to let us get so far that he can't reach us. So there's comfort in that. And it says, when you go through the valley, your cup runs over. It says, goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. They follow you. Goodness and mercy follow you. So think about that as a word picture. You're walking through the valley between these two mountains, right? And you're walking through the valley and you're in this dark place and things don't seem real great, but goodness and mercy are following you. Think about them as actual, I don't know, angels or people or, you know, literal beings of God's goodness and God's mercy and they're following you. Doesn't that just blow your mind? Because it does mine. It just really makes it so much more manageable to say, okay, yes, this is where I am, and this stinks, and I don't like it. But hey, goodness and mercy, how are you doing? You're following me. Come on, let's go. Let's do this thing, right? So I don't know. Maybe I'm weird, but that's <laughs> how I think about it. Um, and then our God is able with power and authority. He, he is able to do all things and he is able to do more than we can ask or imagine. So if he can do more than you could ask or imagine, and I don't know, have you guys seen, um, I know on social media a lot lately, the um, James Webb, you know, like the Hubble aircraft uh, telescope, this new telescope, the James Webb telescope, is putting out these, phenomenal pictures of the galaxies that are just so beautiful, so colorful, so bright, so many billions and billions of stars and planets and galaxies. And it's just amazing to look at. If you haven't seen them, I don't know how you could have missed them, but if you haven't seen them, look them up because they are fabulous. Um, and I think about that and it makes me feel so small. I hate to say small because I'm not insignificant. I don't mean it like that. But so small in comparison to this ginormous universe that God created. And he is able to create all of that. He's certainly able to take care of my little problem. My little tiny snippet, you know, of a problem. <laughs> And even the picture I saw of the billions of stars and, and the galaxies, they said that in comparison to like the whole entire universe, this picture was like the, the size of a grain of sand. Like all of those billions of stars and galaxies and planets were embedded in like the size of a 
grain of sand, which is incredible to think about. And so then I think if that, which looks ginormous to me, and if that is really the size of a piece of sand, grain of sand, I don't even know what you call it, but if that's that really that small, how much smaller am I? I mean, I'm microscopic. You can't even see me. So to think that God loves me that much when I am, you know, dust, it's just amazing to me. So the things to remember are to accept, accept that you're in the valley. Don't try to deny it. Don't try to uh, find your own avenue out of it and take matters into your own hands. Accept that you're in a valley. Do the work that you have to do to get through the valley, but accept that you're there. Um, announce who your God is. And I mean even out loud. Voice activate it. God is your shepherd and he is um, your goodness and your mercy and your provider. And so just announce all that. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge that he is able. Acknowledge what he can do for you. And know that he's going to guide and guard and protect you. And he has all power and authority to do it because he is the creator of the universe. He is the creator of you. And he is the creator of the valley. So he has a purpose and a plan for it. And he's going to use it because all things work together for the good of those who love Christ. So if you love him, He's using this valley. He's using it for his plan and his purpose to work all things together for your good because he loves you. So I hope that encourages you today and uh, I hope that you'll drop a comment. If you haven't subscribed yet, I wish that you would. Um, if you haven't shared the channel in a while, uh, would you do that too for me on social media or uh, maybe in a messenger message, you can copy and paste it to, to somebody or to a few somebodies, maybe your life group or a Sunday school group or something and, and get some other followers. I would love to get my numbers up just a little bit, uh, but it is up to God, not up to me. So I'll just do what he's told me to do. And you do what he's told you to do. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye.